<clears throat> Welcome to Zero to 60 on a beautiful Wednesday morning here in Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Matt McChesney. As always, we have a quick and to the point show to you for you today. We're doing a huge announcement. I was just on Coach JB's shows with Big Smitty this morning uh, for Coach JB's birthday show. He's like 75 years old now, which is awesome. Uh, my man, uh, Darnell Smith, Big Schmidt, he's going to be joining me on my show here in two minutes when I bring him on. He's in backstage right now uh, putting his face on. So we're going to have some laughs and we're going to talk shop. And, you know, we won't have to argue with some old guy that doesn't think Patrick Mahomes is any good. Uh, as we continue on this show today, zero to sixty on the Believe Network. It's all always brought to you by our good friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is our title sponsor, and without them, we would not have a show. So we cannot tip our cap to them enough. Uh, Bet Online uh, continues to be the number one source for all of your basketball wagering news and notes here, moving into the tournament, to March Madness, to the second half of the NBA season. You can bet on the who's going to win the MVP, who's going to be the sixth man. You know, anything and everything. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously the the tournament, the the conference tournaments in college basketball, and the and March Madness is one of the best times of the year, and always fun to bet on. But make sure you do it responsibly. Uh, you can do it from the the UFC. Uh, it gives you all of your wagering notes and and things that if you have questions, you can go to Bet Online and they will get your questions answered. If you're throwing money against the wall and seeing if it'll stick and get that rent paid. So make sure you go to Bet Online, use the promo code Believe. That's B L E A V, and they will give you a 50% retention bonus on your deposit. You deposit a hun, they give you 50% of that back, and you're up and rolling on Bet Online. So we cannot thank them enough for all that they do. They are the total sponsor for zero to 60, and we are fucking rolling. So I'm bringing my man Big Schmitty in, and there he is. There he is. What's going on, Big Matt? How you doing? And this is in the house. I appreciate you doing this today, brother. My my other guest uh, uh, canceled on me, and you know what? You're better than him anyway, so we should have just booked you in the first place. Come on, All man. Right. Don't, don't make me your backup option next time, Matt. Make me yeah, your no first shit. option. Oh, I fucked up. I shouldn't. You should have been the starter the whole time. I fucked up. It'll never happen again. I promise. Fuck. All right. So. I fight my Ginobili. That's <laughs> He's a bad motherfucker, that guy. He is. That's Darnell Smith. I'm Matt McChesney. We are rolling zero to 60. All right. I'll do the announcement in here when we get more eyes into the chat. Make sure you go in and, and hit the hit like the subscribe button. Make sure you, you know, almost molest that today. A uh, lot of pounding. And then make sure you follow everybody on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And we're rolling. This morning, uh, Coach JB's uh, birthday show, and he was walling out some of the shit that guy says sometimes. I think I'm crazy on, on the internet and on podcasts. And then he starts talking. Let me ask you that right off the bat, dog. I've been doing a lot of radio and podcasts with him for a lot of time. You're with it. Like, I get to take a day off every now and then and shit, right? Yeah. You're with him every day. Do you find <laughs> do you find yourself, like, just calling people slap dicks randomly and shit? I, yeah, like, you, you know what? You slap motherfucker dick. Well, I, that's not me. That's Coach JB talking. My language and lingo has definitely changed over the last, like, six months just from being around JB so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's kind of like, you know, as, a, as a, like being a kid, in a sense, if you're around your parents, you know, obviously every day and your parents are saying certain things, you, you might catch yourself saying that or, you know, or your kid might say some stuff that you said as a dad. So uh, just being around JB, you know, he's a different he's a different breed, a guy who does not hold his tongue for anybody. He doesn't care yeah. what the question is. And when we're talking about this morning. I don't know how his brain connects like certain things together. Like for real. It, 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 it's pretty impressive, honestly. I don't know how he how he does it. Like he'll be talking about LeBron and then somehow bring up like Malcolm X. I'm like, what the hell? How do yeah. we? How do He's you do that? All over the fucking spectrum, bro. And and look, he does a great show. You guys do a great show. I'm I'm really proud to be a part of it. I think that this next year is going to be even better, moving into the new football season and the draft and everything else that's going on out here in the world, right? So we, we were talking this morning and we. You know, like the greatest athlete of all time. And it's something mm. when we got off, I was really thinking about this. And I don't know what the precursors are for it. I don't know what the fucking, you know, like these are the expectations that you need to put on the list for the greatest athlete of all time. I just think about like when I sit here and go, okay, greatest athlete ever. Does that mean he's just a one sport athlete? Is he dual? Whatever it is. I think it's just the guys that pop into your head, whether the notoriety, they change the game. Like if you're, if I'm talking top five, 
I don't know how you keep Muhammad Ali off that list. Mm. I don't know how you keep Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, off that list. Being, I think that everybody brings up Bo Jackson, and they should, but I think Coach Prime did it at a higher level in both sports longer, and he doesn't mm. get that. He doesn't get the recognition for that. You know, thinking like we talked about LeBron and just the overall freak nature of his athleticism. Right. You know, it's. It does it. Do you have to be a football player to be the best athlete ever? Is it a basketball player? Are we giving enough like love to the tennis greats, to swimmers? Where do you stand on all this kind of shit? You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it gets misconstrued on just favorites. I'm not talking about favorite. I'm talking right. about like just raw athleticism and something you see it and go, man, I've never really seen anything like that before. Right. I mean, it's a great debate because I feel like there's two different lanes that that my brain goes to when I think about greatest athletes of all time. One lane is like just a pure, just raw athleticism. Like how high can you jump? How fast can you run? How quick are you? How much stuff can you just naturally do that other people just can't do? Right. Then on the other side is like, how many sports were you dominant in? You know what I'm saying? Like where you were a hell of a football, you think about Allen Iverson, Charlie Ward, you think about some of these guys, uh, Tony Gonzalez, I think, uh, 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 Antonio Gates. Like, these are guys right. who great God, basketball Antonio players. Gates not getting in the Hall of Fame, dog. How did he not get in? I don't know, bro. It's a whole other conversation. I have no idea how that didn't fucking happen. A legend. Um, but it's two different lanes, man. So, like, it, it, it's, it's kind of just depends on how you want to slice it and dice it. You know, when you think about just pure, raw, just, like, gifts, athleticism, there's names like a damn, like a Vince Carter that comes to mind, if I'm being honest. Like, when I think about just... Just That's jumping bad. ability, how he moves in the air, just like the shit he did was crazy. I, I mean, this is a good list right here from by Wayne Morgan. You got Bo Jackson, of course, Michael Jordan. I always think about that famous play where he goes up, would, up, switches in the air, and does the layup. Like, that's like, come on, bro, in the That's 90s, but without all this unreal. high tech equipment, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Bo Jackson can throw a fucking ball, then baseball, the entirety of the, of, of the field, you know. Uh, so I just think about these, these, these pure athletes, man, and, and it's hard. But you bring up a good point, like swimmers. Like, where does Michael Phelps lay? Where like, does Michael like, Phelps sit? He's the amazing. I, my, my man, I don't watch swimming, but when Michael Phelps swim, I he watch. Swimming. <laughs> I watch. I swear I watch. I watch. I watch. That's I watch. how great he is. Like, so <laughs> it's tough, man. So look at it in the chat. We want you guys to get involved. Obviously, Wayne, you got a good point. You know, Jordan, Bo Jackson, Coach Prime, Tiger, Tiger Wood, y'all. Uh, you know, it's hard to pick. I think there's a lot of a lot of folks that just pick generation. They pick era and favorites, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with all that. John Elway, you know, great baseball player, great football player, you know, the, things of that nature. And and look, it's a great question that we will elaborate on moving forward here. But I wanted to bring it up because, look, we'll just do it right now. Next next Wednesday at 1 p.m., um, we bring up you know great athletes, greatest athletes of all time. I announced this today on uh coach jb show with big schmitty and i'll do it again uh we are going to be in boulder in Folsom in coach prime's office and we have a massive interview with the head man at one o'clock on zero to 60 uh with coach prime it'll just be me and him and we're gonna yuck it up and tell some stories and i'm gonna ask some hard questions and i want to know in the chat what questions do you want me to ask how do you want me to get involved with coach prime in this we're gonna do some videos on social media later in the day uh you know bringing bringing uh bringing the community to that as well see if, if people want to get involved and what questions they want me to ask but you know coach and prime and i know each other personally i'm one of the few guys that will actually criticize a little bit as well as pat him on the back and bro i've been trying to get this interview for months and we finally got it next wednesday one o'clock on zero to 60 on the believe network coach prime Deion sanders and your boy uh, Matt McChesney are going to be uh, doing an hour-long interview, bro. I mean, when you heard me say that today on Coach JB show, you were like, damn, that's some good shit. How, just, how do you feel about that? Bro, it's a huge deal. I mean, shout I, out to you for making it happen. I mean, to have, you know, a, a, a legendary buff, you know, in, in yourself, be able to interview a, a current buff who's trying to become a legend there as well, and Coach Prom sitting out, sitting there together. And like you said, you're one of the guys who can, like, Kind of do both. Like you'll praise them, you 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 love on Coach Prime all year long, but you also keep it real and criticize. So I'm just looking forward to just seeing the conversation, the questions that you're gonna uh, ask him, and how he'll respond to him. I know he respects you, so like again, I don't think Coach Prime isn't the type of guy that to me gets offended off just real he questions. He's what, a man. I think that is like 
Why do you think so many – there's some big-time great athletes, homie, and you know this, especially in the field you work in. Like, let everybody know everything you do. Like, you're with Fox. You're on the podcast. You're on radio. You do everything. You were – your your event in, in Indy, right? Yes, sir. Tell everybody about the event you just did and the guests you had and, like, the, the everything, and too, because – People need to understand that you're you've got a like really wide net you cast here, and you interact with people from coast to coast, you know, border to border, dog. And it, it's 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 one of the things I love about uh, just your entire like book. You know, we're talking like books about how guys on the field, but well, you got a book as a media member too, and yours is deep, is deep, homie. So tell everybody about all that shit. Yeah, man, I appreciate that, man. So like, I mean, just giving everyone just a kind of quick. Last five, six year overview. Like I, I'm a guy who played college football, all conference guy. You know, in the MAC, undersized deep tackle. But I had some agents and stuff talking to me, so I feel like I had a chance to go to the next level. Knee injury happened. Football career got ended. You know, I, I got to figure out the real world. Initially, straight out of Ball State, I go to sales. I'm, I'm in the inside sales role. Fucking button up shirt, tucked in my dress pants, just cold calling. You know, Amen. working for a recruiting firm, like doing my thing, just trying to grind. Hey, great company. I'm still close with everybody there to this day. Shout but, out to Kirby. It's my guy. Um, but you kind of burn out. If you were, if you ever worked in sales, you will burn yeah. out quick. So two years into it, man, I get a blessing, man. Jason Whitlock, I know he's super controversial, whatever. He he gave me an opportunity, man. Gave me a handout, and I took it. It was a social media role at Fox Sports. Um, I, I interviewed like five times uh, over the phone, got the job, moved across the country, and from that point, like, life just kind of changed. So, I, you know, I'm still at Fox Sports as a social media producer. Um, I spent about two years on air on a on a former show called Speak for Yourself. I do a ton of freelance work around L.A. I, I, I co-host at the Drew League every summer. Um, I have my own podcast that I co-host with, with my guy, uh, Brian Jones, a.k.a. Bolo, called The Porch Podcast. Nice. We do, uh, we do weekly. It's more it's more of a lifestyle podcast. Where we, we I got to get on that with you, dog. I got to get on that. We got to bring you on there, too, because I know, Matt, yeah, you'll Matt. be actually a great guest because you'll keep it real on there, too. Um, and then, obviously, I do the Coach JB show, too, as well. We just started, you know, doing that. Uh, well, I started doing that back in June. And uh, so we're, we're headed on to, like, a full year of me joining that show. And then last but not least, um, you mentioned my event that, that we just threw down. So my brother, Sheldon Day, he's an uh, eight-year NFL vet, played for the, the Vikings currently. Yep. Uh, we grew up together. This is, this is my brother. You know, blood, what makes it any closer. He has his own business called The Players Company, which is a one-stop shop for all things athlete, whether it's financial literacy, transition from the league uh, to the real world. And a part of that entity is like the, the content side. And that's where I jump in at. So over the last couple of years, I've, I've, I've produced – uh, digital series, podcasts, different events, etc. And what we did last week was the biggest event that we've thrown so far. And basically, it was called the Hoops and Icons event. And it was on Valentine's Day. And it was the kickoff event to NBA All-Star Weekend in my hometown of Indianapolis, Indiana. So we threw a influencer basketball event where we flew in like T.O., uh, Kenny Moore from the coach was there. Uh, so big time, like social media names, like Max is Nice. Uh, we had reality TV stars like Colony e. Reeves. Um, I mean, you know, Tay Crowder played for the Giants. He he participated. Um, Keith Lee, big time food food critic and food influencer, was there. And basically, we wanted to create an an all star like environment that was affordable to the entire community. You know, I grew up poor. I you know I know All Star Weekend. A lot of kids who grew up like me would not be able to participate in it, or in, in an event like that because it just costs so much. So I was like, you know what? Let's do something that's still going to be just as fun, just as impactful, but the whole community can come out. So we had about 2,000 people show up. We did a 303 tournament, three-point shootout, a skills challenge, and a dunk contest with four of the best dunkers in the world, man. And it was a I love it. It was a great feeling, Matt, to go home, to do it at home. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it just felt good. Nothing better than being able to give back to the community that that brought you up. And that's the, I love that about you, D. You're always, always giving back and always repping your, you know, your pocket, your hood. And look, I, it goes back full circle back to this question. I wanted everybody to hear the resume because you know so many dudes and you, you have so many different perspectives and there's so many different things that you hear and you're a sponge dog. You just soak it up and like you can, then you can go out and articulate it in your own, in your own way. 
So, full circle here. I got Coach Prime on my show. Yes, sir. Wednesday at 1 p.m., right? Yeah. Why? Well, you, you said this. He's one of those cats that doesn't get offended. You can criticize him, and he, he comes back with, like, love, and he's understanding, and he, you know, the, the UCLA game where they were struggling with the radar looks, and I got on social media and even said, I hope I don't get blackballed. And uh, he right. responded to me, like, I'm gonna I'll, I'll show the the I'm gonna bring that up on the show and be like this is something people may not know about you how in tune you are to this shit. Why do you think he's one of these all time greats that doesn't have this ego that like gets in the way of him being just a dude too? Like, where, where's your thought on that? I think Coach Prime and I haven't had the opportunity to meet him yet. I hope I can. He he's very secure in who he is. He's very confident in who he is. Like everything he's touched has turned to gold. He's won in every level. Fast. Everything he's done from a coaching little league to college to obviously as a player. So I think when you're very secure in who you are as a man and as a player and as a coach, you can take constructive criticism because your goal is greatness. Your goal is to try to become the best version of yourself that you that you can be. And you understand that on the road to greatness there, there is criticism. And as long as you know it's coming from a good place and it's not just people just bashing you and just talking shit, and especially someone someone like you who loves Colorado. Like, I've never met anyone else who loves the school and university more than you do. So he knows that. So it's like, if I know it's coming from a good place and he just wants the best for me in the, in the program, why would I get offended? Yeah. I think a lot of people, Matt, they're insecure about who they are. So as soon as they hear something negative or constructive or whatever you want to call it, they immediately get defensive and start trying to take shots back at you because they 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 know that the criticism that they're receiving, there's some truth to that, and it hurts them, and they can't handle it. So they got to come back at you a, a different type of way. All right, so look, I'm super excited for the interview. It's going to be off the chain. The, the next week on Wednesday, I think we're going to start making Wednesday the coaches show. Uh, we're going to have Ryan Walters, the head coach from Purdue, will be on the show that day. Uh, so we'll just every Wednesday is going to be a banger on zero to 60 moving forward. Obviously, why we got Big Schmitty on today to set the party off. So this morning, moving on from, from what's going to happen to what already did, this morning we're talking with Coach JB, and Coach JB hates Patrick Mahomes, and he thinks that Andy Reid's the guy, and blah, blah, blah. He's coming around, I think. You, you can't ignore greatness like this for too long. Yeah, but we were talking about Michael Parsons, and and I just saw this again, and I got to bring it up again. And I, I from Barstool Sports, delusional. Michael Parsons doesn't think there's a quarterback in the AFC outside of Mahomes who has done anything to deserve more credit than a guy like Dak Prescott. Where do you sit on a comment like that? I know is he just supporting his teammate, but like it seems to me like he doesn't. For a guy who does a podcast and say he watches all the games, I would hope he's a fucking D-end in the NFL. What about, like, Burrow and Herbert and nah, there's dudes, I, guys, I'm not even bringing up. There's dudes everywhere. Like, how is it that he's so blind? What kind of comment is this, dog? That's dumb as shit. It's, it's dumb as shit. Um, the problem is, Matt, and JB does this too, if, if a player or a team hasn't went and won a Super Bowl, a lot of people will say, oh, they've done nothing. It's like, hold on. Like, there's so much more to football in the season than just getting to the Super Bowl and just winning a Super Bowl. Majority of the players in the NFL have not won a Super Bowl. So I'm not going to say they've done nothing. What is your resume? So when I look at a Josh Allen who's, like, putting up crazy numbers every single year, who, who who's, who's went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes. When I look at a Joe Burrow who led a Bengals franchise who was just – Horrible. They were four and twelve the year before, dog. And then the Come Super on, Bowl. Bro. With the Super Bowl at that age with no O line. Like when I think when I look at that, so like you can't look at that and say they they've done nothing to say that they're better than Dak or they should be above Dak. Dak, listen, he's a good quarterback. He has good numbers every single single year. But when the rubber meets the road, when it matters the most, he does not show up. And it happens every single year. Every single year. Cowboys, great regular season. We all get fooled. Maybe this is the year the Cowboys do it, and then they get upset in the first round or maybe the division around. They they haven't been back to an NFC championship, Matt. Like, let alone – fuck the Super Bowl. We ain't even talking about Super Bowl. They ain't been to an NFC championship game. And, he, and he's a vet vet. Like, he's he's a veteran. You got young guys. You got Lamar been to the NFC championship. You got Burrow been to the Super Bowl. You got Josh – like, all these other cats have – done more 
in less time than your quarterback has already. So that's the problem. So he's about to get paid 60 mil, homie. 60, 60 million dollars for Dak Prescott. Man. I mean, come on. I, that, that's almost laughable. I can do a lot with 60 M's, man. I can do a lot with 60 M's. 60 million dollars? 60 million dollars? 60 million dollars for Dak Prescott? So if he's worth 60, what's Patrick Mahomes worth? A billion. Like, at, what, at what point do, does the quarterback and his salary – it's one thing about Tom Brady that I always love. Like Peyton Manning did this a lot too. They would they would restructure and take less. Tom Brady was like the 15th highest paid quarterback for a lot of years because he knew that if he gave the franchise more, they would go out and maximize and put guys around him. Mahomes did that to a point, still got 500 million. So but <laughs> like it did. But you know what, I mean, though? The salary cap goes up with the, the salary, but damn, that's a lot of bread. When, when it comes to money, I always lean on the player side. And I say, get as much money as you fucking can because NFL stands for not for long. And when it's over, it's over. Yeah. And you will never make that same amount of money again. Not even close, though. Post career, not even close. Not even so close. Get every cent you possibly can. So I'm actually with Dak on that side. It's not his fault. The market is the market. If he's next to be paid, then that's just, that just what it is. Also, to your point about like Brady and Manning taking less to get more talent around him. How much more talent does Dak Prescott need? That's they, a great question. Too. Their That's team is team. loaded, surrounded by fucking talent everywhere, top to so bottom. Why are they giving him sixty million then, dog? Why? Why is it like clip? What option do they have, though, man? That's my question. It's all about leverage. It's all about leverage. If you lose, okay, you you lose Dak, and I don't know the whole uh, like the the contract situation, like the the dead cap, the dead money. So I'm not gonna go into all that. But just from a player standpoint. Who are you? Who are you getting to to replace Dak at at a, at a cheap amount? That's going to still at least keep your team relevant. At bare minimum, the cow, Dak has kept the Cowboys relevant and kept us uh, them as a as a topic that makes us think they might win every single year. We at least think they might have a chance. Well, then why why is it like a team? And look, San Francisco for all their faults, they're still. In the NFC title games constantly in Super Bowls. I mean, the, the last four years, they're either losing in the NFC title game or they're in yeah. the Super Bowl losing. So that that's very similar to like a, the buff, the four falls of Buffalo where they had four straight trips. They're not shitty. They're in the title game. Right. So why is it that San Francisco and even like Philadelphia, they rotate quarterbacks out quick? Like Jalen Hurts is on the hot seat. They San Francisco rotates out quarterbacks quick. Why is it that the 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 situation here that we're looking at with the Cowboys, why are they sticking on Dak so long? I understand there's not a lot of options and shit, but you've got other teams that are more successful rotating the quarterback position through and building with a young guy that's really cheap. Mm. I, and it seems to be working better for them because they have the team around them. So back to your point. If the Cowboys already have the goddamn team around Dak, why are we going to give this dude sixty million if he seems to be the issue? That's a hell of a question, and I don't know if I have the answer for that, Matt. Because <laughs> well, you're right. It's like if, if I brought you all the pieces and you're still not changing our destination, we yeah. might we might as well go with somebody else who's cheaper. Because worst case scenario, you'll, you'll put us in the same spot or maybe a step, a one step lower. My, at least at least we're saving money, though. Like so at least like you. if you're Jerry Jones and. I mean, let's be real. Jerry Jones is at at the end of the, he's old as shit. So mm-hmm. he, he's that that plays into this, and no one can tell me it doesn't. No one can tell me that Jerry Jones being an old head and being you know, almost eighty years old and knowing that you know the, there's a the light at the end of the tunnel is the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Like he wants to win. He wants to get a Super Bowl trophy before it, it's time. So that like I, why wouldn't they be? They're going to be picking somewhere in the 20s because they lost in the division round. So if they're picking 25, 26, and Bo Nix is sitting there, you, I think you got to make that. You got to draft it, even if you are paying Dak. Like, go get one of these young cats just to see, bro. Because yeah. I, look, being in Denver, the Russell Wilson thing is a massive red flag. Like, and it, I think it's a red flag for a lot of franchises. Like the Kirk Cousins contract, that didn't really cripple the franchise, but his next deal might, and he's coming off an Achilles. So I, I don't know, dog. This is a really, really, really 
complex question, to say the least. If you're the Cowboy, would you consider doing something crazy like trading Dak to the yes. Bears to get the number one pick and trying yes. to get Keller Williams? 100%. If they, look, if the Cowboys and the Bears, if they say, look, we'll trade you Dak and uh, Lawrence just, just because he's got a high cap number and next year's first round pick and we want your first rounder and uh, Justin Fields. Woo! And now, Woo! now you got a guy on a rookie contract with Justin Fields, the, and he's at the end of his rookie contract, so you can try him for a year, and he's your bridge. Mm. And you finally got an athlete at the quarterback position in Dallas because that's – I know Dak can run, but he ain't running. He's not a runner. Like, in, it's the first time ever that you'll have, like, a guy that can actually move outside of Roger, the Dodger Staubach. Yeah. So, and then you can draft, the, you take the first overall pick with Caleb Williams or Drake May, whoever they identify as that guy, and you build behind Justin Fields for a year, and then check this out. If Justin Fields hits, and he fucking develops, and he just needed to be around better personnel and out of the Windy City, which has never had a 4,000-yard passer in the history of the Chicago Bears, and they were the first goddamn franchise. What the fuck? Yeah. Maybe it's just the situation and Matt Eberflutes being his coach and not having anybody to throw to other than DJ Moore and, like, being in the purgatory that is Chicago. If he develops and now you've got another asset and you've got a, the first picks just sitting there, that seems like good business to me. And you're offloading a $60 million a year salary – and then to everyone in Chicago can like make up the fact that they think Dak is the answer. I mean, why wouldn't you do that shit if you're the Cowboys? Hey man, that'd be a crazy move, man. It would sell tickets. It would, it would, it would do everything the Cowboys want to do. Like it's risky, but it's like, what's the risk? I mean, you haven't done anything with Dak, so you're gonna lose more. <laughs> right, like <laughs> you're already doing I mean, that. So. All right, so we got about ten more minutes here on zero to sixty. So so thankful for my man Big Schmitty coming on the show today. Uh, and talking shop. I wanted to bring this up here if I can find the correct video. Who's your current top five in the league right now? Basketball players? Mm -hmm. That motherfucker from the Nuggets, Jokic. Hey, hands down. I'm like, it used to be Giannis. That nigga then came out of nowhere and he don't fuck around. That nigga right there, him. Now, I just wanted to bring this up as we transition into the NBA. It is the NBA season. I love basketball. So do you. Dude, if Snoop's talking about it and he loves Jokic, like, do you think that Nikola needs another MVP? And then we talked about this on JB's show. How disappointed are you in the NBA to let these guys take 25 games off and we don't get to see him beat and Nikola play? And, like, man, I, Snoop loves Nikola. <laughs> that motherfucker right there is a bad motherfucker. I, Snoop should be commentating games, dog. I would, pay, I would pay pay-per-view to get the like the rated R version of Snoop smoking a blunt and fucking calling the NBA Finals. I want Snoop and Marshawn Lynch. No, oh my yeah. God, that would be sick. Great, legendary. So. And then what, what's the dude from TNT? Ernie? Ernie. Ernie <laughs> trying to keep everybody to moderate. <laughs> <laughs> all right now snoop you said uh oh, pass the blunt marshawn so what what do you do is nicola still the top of the mountain here or is it like because he's so boring and he doesn't have social media and he's not in the media and he's one commercial of him and they already forgot about how great he is yes yeah, it's, it's so uh, this is a hard question i feel like due to the nugget success and how how much how important he is to the like their success and, and their right. wins. I think you got to put Jokic at number one right now. I, I'm still a big Giannis fan because I think Giannis, uh, he, I think he, he does it on both sides of the court. Not saying Jokic doesn't play defense. I just think Giannis is a better defender. Yeah. He can play, yeah. he can guard all five positions. Uh, but when it, at the end of the day, it's about winning. And Jokic knows how to win. He does every, he does everything offensively. Every He's their best point guard. He's their best center. He's their fucking, like, he shoots past rebound. He does it every game. Like, he doesn't take a night out, a night off ever. Like, even so, there's some time I'm watching the game, and I'm like, damn, I feel like a, hey, Bri. Sometimes I'm watching the game, and I'm like, yeah. um, damn, like, uh, Yoga isn't doing too much tonight. But now I look at the stat sheet, I'm like, like 25 points, 17 rebounds, 11 assists. I'm like, well, shit, I'm sorry. Yeah. Quiet night, you know. 
Who, who do you think is going to be in your finals? Who, if you had to pick the finals right now, moving into the second half of the season, yeah. who do you want to be in the finals and who do you think will be in the finals? That might be the same answer. I think it's going to be uh, – I think Denver goes back. And I, I I know this team is struggling a little bit right now, figuring things out, but I think the Bucks find a way. I think it's the Bucks and uh, the Nuggets Woo! in the finals. And that's going to be a bad – now who wins, I don't know. I, I got to see a little, I gotta see a, a little bit more. But I think that's going to be the battle, man. It's going to be a hell of a, hell of a matchup. That's what I want, too. Bucks, Nuggets, and you get to see Dame Time and Giannis and Jokic and Jamal Murray. And uh, make sure that you go on the live stream and like and subscribe. Make sure you follow Big Schmitty, uh, my, the, the, my co-host and producer, Bree Maestas. Uh, my love here on, on the show, getting involved as well, telling everybody to subscribe. You better listen to her. She can whip that ass. Uh, last question, okay? Going from the NBA now. Back to the NFL. <clears throat> what is it going to take for Schmitty or for, for JB, excuse me, to actually crown 15? Because I my my I love Tom Brady. He's the GOAT. There's no debate. I mean, there is a debate, but it's it's complex, and this is why. I listened to Teddy Bruschi, okay? And I didn't hear this interview right when it came out. I saw it yesterday. Teddy Bruschi talking about, you know, Tom was a complimentary piece on the first couple of Super Bowl teams. He accounted for one touchdown in their first Super Bowl run and so on and so forth. He was still an integral part. He won three, right? right? But he even said Mahomes at this point, after six years and three Super Bowls, the same Tom, same Tom had, Mahomes is like head and shoulders better than Brady. Now, he didn't say he was better than his career, but yeah. when you got – a captain and Teddy Bruschi is probably going to be a Hall of Fame player who was on those squads and in the in the war room with Tom saying that that holds a lot of weight with me. What is it going to take for the anti Mahomes community that maybe just don't like the Chiefs, but more specifically, I really value Coach JB's fucking opinion on quarterbacks, especially. Are we missing something, homie? Is there something about Mahomes you and I are missing? Because I don't feel like we are. I just I watch him and I'm like. This dude is re redefining the quarterback position. Yeah, I, I don't think we're missing anything. I mean, listen, JB is a quarterback, so like he has a different perspective where he like he truly grew up and like he he understands the nuances of the quarterback position. Not saying we don't, but we played, we were on the line. So like, there's certain things that I watch as a D lineman where right. I'm like, I like Mike Michael Parsons, but he's not the, he's not the best pass rusher to me because I look at the actual like little details of a D lineman, the hand play with the actual move. What what moves do you have? Are you just using? Are you just rushing and that's it? Or are you actually like setting your guy up up and unders, push pulls? Like so, I think JB looks, looks at the quarterback position the same way. It's like okay, is he dropping? He's doing his five stack drop back. Is he letting the ball come out on time? Is he the real finite details where you and I we're looking at it like bro. This dude, he just, fucked, he, he's just amazed. He's throwing off one foot, yeah. no look, sixty yard pass, and they're winning. So I think that's part of it. Number two, I think Mahomes needs to win without Andy Reid. I think that's going to be, and I don't know when Andy Reid's going to retire or how it will, it will line up. But if he can win one without Andy Reid at some point in his career, I think JB will finally be like, you know what? It wasn't just a gimmicky system. It wasn't all Andy Reid. It wasn't this, that, and the third. Mahomes is like that. And I think that's what it's going to take. So again, I don't know when any any still is like he has energy in his in his system. I don't know if he's going to stay around for ten more years. I have no idea. But you that's know, the answer me to me. I'd uh, I would love a world <laughs> where Tom Brady just came off because he could still play Garrett fucking team. Yeah, Paul Kyle Shanahan was like, yo. I want to come back and, and be. I want to come back and I'll I'll go league minimum. One year deal, I, and Purdy can back me up, or we could trade his ass, and I'll come back and I'll be the Niners quarterback, and it, let's see where we can take this. And then you get an I get a fucking team. San Francisco goes back to the Super Bowl, and it gets hurt. You put Tom Brady on that team, bro. How cool would that be? Bro, I was thinking about that because you know Tom Brady's a Damn. crazy competitor, right? Yes. He's like looking like this motherfucker yeah, Mahomes is on true. my ass, like. I, I would have to think that Tom is pissed off that he's like already being forgotten. Yeah, quick. He just retired. He, he just, just retired. Playing and, and his last year, he didn't fall off of a cliff. He led the league in passing. Right, right. With a bad football team. They were not good. 
Yeah. So, and, and he well, beat Mahomes twice, AFC yeah. Championship and a Super Bowl, and they still you know, not has, what, Mahomes has three playoff losses. Burrow, AFC, Brady, Brady. Brady in the AFC title game, Brady in the Super Bowl, and Burrow in the AFC title game. Now, that oh, alone is fucking greatness, bro. That's nuts. That's what nuts. I'm saying. Absolutely fucking crazy. Brady oh, might want to come back and, and get number eight. I don't know. He might do it. Now, now but what? why wouldn't he? In the league where you can't get hit, I mean – he could pretty much just write up his own fucking contract and be like, this is what I want. This is what I expect. They probably give him a fucking ownership stake if he came back at this point. I mean, Kyle Shanahan, for all of his faults as a coach, Tom Brady makes up for that kind of shit. I don't know if I'm, I'll get you off after this, but remember the, the Tampa Bay Super Bowl? They were seven and five that year. At yeah. one point. And they were struggling, who just retired, the great pro, and won a Super Bowl at Tampa that year, beating the Chiefs. He was telling me that, like, Tom walked in one day and was like, Bruce, I'm taking over. I'm putting the Tom Brady fucking offense in. We're not doing any more of this four-wide shit. We're going heavy tight ends with Britt and Gronk. We're going 13 personnel. We're putting the fullback on the field. We're going to work. We're hammering the football. And they didn't lose again. Yeah. They went on a run and won the Super Bowl. That is what I'm saying with, like, he comes back and he doesn't just bring the I'm the best quarterback ever. He – that that play in the Super Bowl that I posted, all right? Go to the TikTok page, Instagram, and Twitter. You'll see all of them. There's two third downs, and they're both in the fourth quarter. There's the Brock Purdy, Purdy third down where, you know, Kansas City's in a in, with one hand, one guy down, Chris Jones at the top of the, of the, the screen in a five technique. Everybody else is standing. It's a simple radar look. They're three for two over here. They bring McDuffie. They're three for two. There's an extra defender. They also bring the other top side safety, but that that's two for two sides. So they're they're pinching and they're dropping off one of the D linemen. So it becomes like a radar max. And this is an easy full turn and just dump the ball. Purdy panics, turns because he's going to get hit, throws the ball into the ground. Brandon Ayuk's wide open. They have to they kick a field goal. Kansas City gets the same exact look going in. They end up kicking a field goal too as later in the drive. And they, San Francisco lines up in an even with double threes and they mug Fred Warner in 48. And then when uh, Kansas City goes with McKinnon, instead they full turn the protection tally five man away. And when you insert the back away, right? I don't know how many times I've talked about this within the groups and in the lab, but that guy goes to cut the defensive end. Well, if you run up like you're going to cut him and then turn and the ball's there, it's the easiest completion ever, and that's exactly what they do. He runs up, he gives the illusion he's going to cut him and runs right by his ass, and they just dump the ball to him for a 12-yard gain. That's the biggest difference between having a coach on the field and having a quarterback on the field. Yeah. Tom Brady picks that up. He doesn't allow that to beat them right there. So – if you're him, why the fuck wouldn't you want to come back and solidify greatness? And it also would be like the coolest story ever. This isn't Brett Favre going back, dog. This is Tom Brady. Yeah, it'd be legendary, bro. I'm getting chills thinking about it. Like, it's right there. And the Niners already, you know, came out and said they were trying to get Brady, uh, was it this past year, I believe. Right, trying to get Brady, and they already told Purdy, you know, like, if he comes back, you're the backup. And Purdy was like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, I ain't yeah, up. like can I get a can I get a fucking uh, an autograph? Thanks, Tom. Right, right, man. All right, brother, that? I appreciate you. You great show. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your time off. We'll be back Monday morning on Coach JB Show at eight a.m. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Schmidt. Have yourself a great day, and uh, I'll see you on Monday, homeboy. Appreciate, appreciate you, my guy, man. Hey, chat. Talk to y'all later. Peace. All right, Big Schmidt, he's out. Uh, big thanks to him. Uh, anybody in the chat that's got any questions, we'll keep it going for about another five minutes here. Make sure you like and subscribe, uh, and we can talk more about the, the Colorado thing and Coach Prime. But like I said, on uh, on Wednesday of next week, um, 1 p.m., live on YouTube, 0 to 60. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and get those numbers up before we get up there. I will be in Boulder interviewing Coach Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, one-on-one -on -one, uh, for a good hour. Uh, my team is going to go up, and Bree will be there, and uh, my man Bishop will be there filming and we'll be posting everything as we go. And I, I'm really fucking excited about it, bro. I can't wait. So, uh, you know, hats off to coach prime and his, and his, uh, group, Sam is PR guy for, for all the hard work they do, uh, getting stuff like this set up. I'm so fucking excited. I don't know what to do with myself. So 
please, if you have any questions or anything you want me to ask the big man, just let me know and we'll get all that in. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and just try and like have, you know, the same conversation everybody has with him. He knows he's great. Uh, it, I, I'm going to ask some tough questions and we're, we're going to have some tough conversations, I think. And, you know, I love that place and he's the head coach there. And I, I think that it has the potential to be one of the most uh, incredible and special places in all of college football. And I know he does too. So I really can't wait for it. So um, <clears throat> look, great show this morning. It doesn't seem like anybody's got any, oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's see here. Here's a good question. Does Colorado still have the tight end that they used in the TCU game? No, they don't. He transferred. Uh, Mikey transferred. So, But they did bring in some new cats, and we'll talk to Coach Prime about all the guys they brought in, uh, you know, in the, in the transfer portal and with NIL deals this year too. So um, I'm pretty excited about this, man. So remember, go to at 6 Academy. Go to at 0 to 60 on Twitter and Instagram. Go to at 6 Equipment. And you can check out the body bags and everything, um, uh, you know, and, and everything we do there. Go follow all those platforms. We will be starting a Twitch page here pretty soon as well. So you can see everything going on at the gym whenever we're over there training. We got a lot of shit going on and, and we're rolling. So um, I really, really, really cannot uh, wait uh, for all of this. And whoa, what was this? My son is in the Prime documentary. Really? Shit, man. I didn't know that. Is it uh, the one on Prime video? I'm going to have to go check that out right now. Uh, yeah, we got in trouble for going to the Stanford game, and we didn't even go. So that's cool that he's in the Prime documentary. That's pretty awesome. Um, so we'll, we'll have to check that out, I guess. Good job, Nick. Um, yeah, it is. This is going to be a banger with Coach Prime. I can't wait. Uh, it, it's going to be really, really kick-ass. So you know, the head coach of the Buffs and, and, and myself – Next Wednesday, one o'clock, and we'll be uh, we'll be putting all that out and making sure that everyone's involved. Um, we'll be back tomorrow at ten a.m. We really appreciate everybody uh, watching the show and supporting from afar. Uh, thank you again. Zero to sixty is a wrap. Um, you guys have yourself a great day. <laughs>